Welcome back to the channel. And in today's Blender tutorial, we're gonna be looking at how to make this abstract ceramic render in Blender. So we'll be doing this procedurally and then we'll be creating the materials in the node setup. Now this is my original. So the one we're gonna be doing the tutorial, I'm gonna try and follow the same sort of thing, but it always looks a little bit different. So my expectation is that you learn the overall idea and then you go ahead and you tweak your lighting, your reflectivity, things like that. Um, make a big difference in the overall look, especially just tweaking the lighting can have a big impact using HDRIs. So um, look at this as more of like a general guide and then take this sort of idea, run with it and see what you guys can come up with. After all, it's much more interesting to make something that's unique to you rather than looking exactly like a tutorial. So this is the render of my original, this is the setup, but uh, more or less, the one we'll be doing this tutorial is gonna be following the same idea. So let's jump in and I will be uploading my original to Patreon as well. So Patreons will be getting access to that. So let's start off by selecting everything in the new scene in Blender. And we're gonna go ahead and press delete. And now let's go shift A. Let's go to our mesh options. We'll add in a torus. And what we're gonna do is we'll actually go over to our modifiers. We'll go add modifier, go search, and let's type in sub. Let's give it a subdivision surface. And under the level uh, viewport here, let's give that something like five. And um, what we're gonna do as well, we're gonna go add modifier search and we're gonna go displace, type in displace. And then let's quickly head over, over here to our displace, click new. And then we need to tell it what texture to use. We're gonna go down to our texture properties. And we're gonna come here to the type. We're gonna change it to wood. And you can see we're already kind of getting there, but we want to change it from the type, well, not the type, but we want to go down to the pattern under the wood settings here. We want to do the pattern and let's make that band noise. And now we got this, this kind of cool looking noise effect. Um, we're going to go to the size. Let's make it 0.8 or maybe a bit smaller. Let's go 0.6. Okay, 0.6. And let's give it a little bit more turbulence. I'm going to go with 15 to see what that looks like. Okay, um, maybe 25. Okay, I like that. That's looking cool. But uh, what we can do as well is we're gonna just go S to scale it up. In fact, let's go S5 to scale it up five times. And then let's just go Control A and apply to scale. Here you can see now it looks like this. And um, let's just actually go to the size here, maybe make it 0.8. Um, honestly, it's completely up to you what you want to try. Like the nice thing about this is you can mess around with it all you want, but I think maybe 0.6 would work really well. And with the turbulence, it might be a bit too high. I'll take it to 19. Um, yeah, but like mess around with the size and the turbulence and that's really gonna have a big impact on how this all looks like. What I'm also gonna do is I'm just gonna tab into edit mode. I'm gonna go to my top of graphic view I'm just going to select half of this. I'm going to go X and just delete those faces and I'm going to tap back out. And that's all we kind of need here. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here. First of all, let's just select this, right click and go Shades Move. Let's go to our modifiers and we'll go over here and go Add Modifier, Search and just type in Sub. Give it another sub surface. And um, let's just put the render and the viewport both at one, like this. And we're gonna right click and just make sure to go shade smooth. There we go. And now in our front view, we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna add in a camera. We're gonna press zero on a number pad to go into the camera view. And you can kind of zoom the camera back a little bit and then go G, move it up. There we go. And if your 3D cursor is in the middle, you can always go ahead and make your transform pivot 3D cursor. And you can go R, X, and kind of rotate it around the cursor and then move up a little bit. So we're just gonna to wanna to view like this. If you want to, go ahead and go to your object out of properties for the camera. You can change your focal length. I like to maybe bump mine up just a little bit more, something higher. And I'm gonna go with that for now. I think that's looking really good. So now let's go over to our render properties. I'm gonna change our render engine from EV to Cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then under your render, I'd recommend you take the max samples and put it up to 45. Now go Shift A, add in a light, add in an area light and go G, Z and move it up. And let's go to our light properties and let's give it a strength of 1,300. And let's increase the size to about 
three meters. And then in our front orthographic view, we're just gonna go R to rotate it. And in this case, I might just increase the size even more, maybe like five meters. And we're gonna have this light kind of coming from the side, like so. So if you now go into our camera view, and we go Z and we click on render, we should see this is what we have, okay? Um, I'm also gonna just go, I kind of like that it's darker in here, it kind of gives a little bit of contrast. But what I'm gonna do, I might just pump the power of my light up to 1500. And that's looking really good. Okay, so there we have that for now. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go into my shading workspace and go into the camera view. And before we actually render this, we're gonna add in a few nodes. So let's click on this torus. Let's go new. And let's just call this ceramic pearl. Okay, that's gonna be our material. And let's take this principle here. So we're gonna go shift D to duplicate it and drag another one on top of it. Okay, and this top one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here, we're gonna give it kind of like a reddish orange color. And then we're gonna come here and we're gonna take the roughness and we're gonna just bring it down to about 0.3. There we go. Just close to 0.3 should be fine. And then we're gonna take the metallic all the way up to one. And we're gonna go down to the sheen and we're gonna give it a weight of 0.8, okay? And then what we wanna do is we actually wanna take this top one and blend it with the bottom nodes. So we're gonna go Shift A, okay, I'll come in closer, Shift A, search and get a mix shader, place it on here, and let's just actually grab this top principle and place it into the bottom socket of the factor. And we wanna blend this. So we're gonna go Shift A, search and get an ambient occlusion. So type in ambient occlusion. And let's just actually grab both these principles, just move them back like so. And we're gonna take this ambient occlusion and we're gonna take that color and plug it into the factor of the mix shader. And now you can see already, this is what we have over here. So if you go Z and you go rendered, you can see this is what we have. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'll just go into solid because it's quite processor intensive. So going back into the solid view for now, we're gonna go shift a search and get a color ramp, place it over here between the ambient occlusion and the mix shader. And let's set it to constant and then let's drag this white value down like so. Then let's come over here to our bottom principle. Let's give it kind of like a pinkish kind of material, color. Let's grab the normal here and type in noise and let's get a noise texture. And let's go shift A search and get a bump and get a, and get a bump. Let's place a bump on here, making sure that the factor goes into the height. And let's give it a strength of 0.15. Let's come to the detail and take it up to nine. And also just come over to your world properties and make sure you put the light value up a little bit under the world background color. And this pink here, you can make a little bit lighter. Let's just also go up to our top principle. Let's just go down to the sheen and let's just also give it a tint. And we're gonna go with a pink tinge. And if that all done, what we can do now is we can go ahead, make sure to save, let's just go render and do a quick test render by going render image. Okay, so something went really wrong over here. So let's just quickly have a look and see what happened. I think what we should do is just select the torus, go down modifiers, and under the subdivision surface, I can see the issue here. I gave it a viewport display level of five, but obviously the render needs something. So I'm gonna take the render up to five as well. And let's just real quick as well, another thing I was thinking about, instead of having this as a noise texture, in the bottom principle, let's just delete that and go shift A search and get a wave. And we'll go with a wave texture, plug the factor into the height. And then we'll go from bands to rings. And let's give it a distortion of like five. And then increase the bump strength to like 0.2. And then let's go shift A search and just get a ramp get a color ramp, place it on this cable and make it constant as well and just drag this white value down. And then let's just give it a scale value of 90 and then just drag on the vector and type in texture coordinate 
and get the generated option. So the generated is going to the vector here. And let's just also go to our bottom base color and make it much lighter pink. And also just bring down that roughness as well. And now let's just go ahead and make sure to save everything. And now let's go ahead and just go render and then render the image. And there we have it, a really nice looking render. Now you can see over here, um, obviously, the more you're gonna do with your lighting, I think you'll get a better result. So with my original, I did the exact same sort of material setup, but I just did a little bit more um, effort with my lighting. So I messed around with the lighting a little bit. Um, anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. It's a little bit of fun, you know, trying it out. And I will be uploading my original file to Patreon, which like I said, is the exact same thing, only tweaks a little bit more of the lighting. So at this point, I encourage you to mess around with it. Um, and see what you can do, have fun with it, and um, you know, share your results with people on the internet. And I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.